I always like to begin my videos with, uh, oh, I, I think that's a great way to start with these. So whenever you watch one of them, that's probably what you'll see. Can't, so we gotta go with that today. Conditional statements. You guys understand conditional statements. You've been hearing them your whole life. Uh, you probably hear them from your parents multiple times a week, if not day. Um, they go something like this. Adam, you are not going to your friend's house to play video games unless you clean your room. This sounds very familiar. <laughs> sounds familiar, doesn't it? Okay. Um, and every single conditional statement, it, it follows this certain pattern. Okay. It follows this if-then pattern. If-then. You know, if it's cloudy outside then it's gonna rain okay okay I just saw Jabri do this thing <laughs> okay so let me let me just preface this every single conditional statement is not true okay so if you are in Mr. Collar's class then he really likes you now that one's obviously true but not all of them are true, okay? So I just want you to get over the thing that this has to be a true statement, okay? Because we know your parents do this too all the time. They're never true. They're like, Cassidy, clean your room or you're not doing whatever it is that you want to do, right? Well, we all know that Cassidy hasn't cleaned her room in many years. And yet, somehow, she has been able to do the thing her parents said that she was not going to do, right? Right, Cassidy? Yeah, it's okay. true. I know it's true. Okay, so, uh, they don't always have to be true. <clears throat> but they, they do follow this, this conditional thing. And it looks something like this. It says, if, and then there's this hypothesis. If you don't clean your room. If you put gas in the car. If it's a bird if two lines are perpendicular, whatever it happens to be. And then we have this conclusion, okay? And we like to abbreviate these. We like to say if P, that's what we like to use for the hypothesis, then conclusion, we use a Q. And we're even lazier than that, we just do this. And that says P leads to Q. This particular hypothesis leads to this particular conclusion. Um, if you are in Houston, then you are in Texas. Right? If it is fourth period, then you are in math. Okay? Uh, what about this? What if, what if it's uh, you're in math? If you're in math. Then it's fourth period. Okay. Uh, what about this? Uh, if you are not in math, then it's not fourth period. Ooh. This can get complicated. Okay. So, okay. So first of all, let's just let's just start with this simple one. All birds have feathers. Okay, first of all, this isn't if then, right? But it, but it is a conditional statement and it can be written in that form. So we can write if, can we write it if then, if, if it's a bird, then it has feathers? Okay, I, we should probably write it more properly if an animal is a bird then it has to but I'm just gonna say if it's a bird then it has feathers <coughs> now that particular if then statement happens to be true that's the definition that's what a bird is right if it has feathers it's a bird if it has hair that's right reptile okay <laughs> Now, one thing we got to be clear about. See this, it's a bird bit? 
that is the hypothesis it has feathers that is the conclusion if I ask you what is the hypothesis and you say if it's a bird you would be wrong okay if is not part of the hypothesis then is not part of the conclusion is that clear okay so if that's all you're asked for make sure you, you don't you don't do that and I'm, I'm gonna we're, we'll talk about why by the way so if it's a bird then it has feathers so we can identify the different parts of it okay by the way did I tell you after you get done with this chapter you guys are gonna be great uh, at arguing your parents into giving you whatever you want because you all know right now you're horrible at arguing right no. trying to make a logical argument to get your parents to buy you whatever it is that you want That's what I mean. you're horrible at it aren't you the only the only thing you got going for you is tenacity like you like if I ask them 8,000 times eventually I'm gonna break them down right <laughs> okay but I'm gonna show you how to make better arguments okay so we have to understand okay conditional statement uh, if then form right uh, hypothesis conclusion we got that okay new word negation uh, I'm going to negate this particular thing if it's not a bird then it does oops not have feathers okay so that's the negation of that particular sentence that's not too bad is it okay uh, some things to be aware of though let's say I give you uh, this statement if it's not a Great Dane then it's not a big dog okay so first of all Jabri did the eye roll again because it's not true because she's thinking well I have a St. Bernard or something like that right but once again I'm not talking about whether it's true or not right now okay so if it's not a, what did I start with not a Great Dane then it's not a big dog okay so if that's the original if-then statement and we want to negate it it would be if it is a Great Dane then it is a big dog so what did I do we, we take the knot out of it don't we so if there's a knot in there and you want to negate it you got to take it out if there's not one in there and you want to negate it you got to put it in does that make sense to everybody that's a little weird but that's the way it works okay so some things we have to be able to do we have to be able to take some uh, statement and write it in if-then form. Um, all guitar players are musicians. Okay, I didn't ask you whether you agreed with that statement. I, I, I want you to think about can we write that in if-then form if you Is that the way I said it? If you're a guitar player, then you're a mu musician? I think I said it that way. Okay. So, uh, what is the hypothesis here? You are a guitar player. Okay. What is the conclusion? You are a musician. Okay. So, we have to understand those two things. We have to be able to identify the hypothesis and the conclusion. Now, we have to learn some new, new words here. Uh, we have to learn converse. Now, I think so far, the only thing you guys know about converse is they make some old tennis shoes or something, right? Okay? So that's not what we're talking about. Uh, converse, in this case, uh, it looks something like this.
Instead of P leads to Q, it's Q leads to P. So instead of if you are a guitar player, then you're a musician, it's if you're a musician, then you are a guitar player. Don't worry about if it's true or not yet, Adam. But that is the contrapositive. Or excuse me, that was a big word. Converse. Converse. Okay? You just switch the hypothesis and conclusion. And sometimes you have to change the wording a little bit so that it sounds right. You know what I mean? You can't always just say, if you are a musician, then you are a guitar player. This one worked perfectly. Sometimes you have to put in an extra word or two or rewrite it a little bit so it sounds like English. Okay? So don't, don't worry about that. Okay? Uh, then we need to talk about the inverse. Inverse looks like this. Squiggly P leads to squiggly Q. Squiggly means negation or not. Not P leads to not Q. So instead of if you're a guitar player, it's if you are not a guitar player, then you are not a musician. Now, did I change the order? No, order stayed the same, right? Okay, all I did was negate the hypothesis and negate the conclusion. Everybody with me? Okay, now big word that I mentioned early on accident. Contrapositive. It looks like this. Squiggly Q leads to squiggly P. The contrapositive is the converse and the inverse. You have to switch the hypothesis at conclusion and you have to negate each of them as well. So it would be if you are not a musician then you are not a guitar player. Now, it seemed like some of these you guys were okay with and some of you, you gave me the that's not true Mr. Collard look, right? So now we're going to talk about true and false, okay? Uh, some statements are true, some are false. That's just the way it is, okay? Not every if-then statement is true. Um, however, if I look at a conditional statement, if I look at the original conditional statement, and I look at the contrapositive, after I move it up so you can see it, those two, okay, those two will always have the same truth value. Now, I know that doesn't seem like math, but it is. They're either both true or they're both false. Always, always, always. And here's why. They say the same thing. Think about this. If you're a guitar player, then you are a mus musician. If you are not a musician, you are not a guitar player. They'll say the same thing. Yeah, they're always both true or both false. The original statement and the contrapositive, both true, both false, always. And then, converse, inverse are either both true or they're both false, all the time, okay? And, and again, it's because they really say the same thing. Uh, if you are a musician, then you are a guitar player. If you are not a guitar player, then you are not a musician. Yeah. Is that really the same thing? It must be because they're either both true or both false. Okay? Now, is it possible that all four are true? Yes. All four can be true. All four of them can be false. Okay? And I'm going to give you an example of one. Okay. And this is, this is the case for most definitions and properties of mathematics okay and it is that all four will be true 
So here's my if-then statement. If two lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form four right angles. If two lines in the same plane are perpendicular, then they intersect and form four right angles. Not just one, four. Right? Okay. So, okay, now, converse. If two lines intersect and form four right angles, then they're perpendicular. Inverse. If two lines intersect and don't for, form, and wait, and they're not perpendicular, then they don't form four right angles. Right? Contrapositive. If two lines intersect and they don't form two, four right angles, then they are not perpendicular. All four of those statements are true. Okay? And that, that is the case for mathematical definitions in general. Okay? Or properties. Um, if two quantities are equal, and I subtract, if I subtract uh, the same value from both sides of the equal sign, then it will still be equal. Well, if you do the converse and inverse and contrapositive, those are all true. Okay? So, mathematical properties and, and things mostly like that. Now, let's, let's think about some that are not necessarily all true. Um, let's go back to our big dog. If um, it's a uh, Great Dane, then it is a big dog. True or false? True. And I don't want it. I don't want any of this bull crap. Uh, what if it's a puppy? Stuff. Okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, converse. True or false? False. False. Okay. Inverse. True or false? False. What did, what did I put true there? <laughs> false. False. Okay, contrapositive. If it is not a big dog, then it is not a Great Dane. And you notice that one is in fact true as well. So the original statement and the contrapositive both true. The inverse and the converse both false. By the way, remembering these. Converse. Everyone just imagine converse all-stars on your feet. Now imagine them on the wrong feet. Switch them. Switch your converse all-stars. They're on the wrong feet. That's converse. Switch them, right? And then inverse. It's not, it's not converse. I don't know how to remember that one. Uh, if you can remember which one's converse, though, you can remember the inverse, right? Okay. Uh, as you do this assignment today, uh, you are going to get a hand cramp. Uh, your parents are going to, you're going to tell your parents, oh, I'm doing math. And they're going to be like, you're not doing math. You're writing a whole bunch of sentences. That's English or something, right? So your job now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think of a, an if-then statement, nothing that I've talked about today already or that's in the book. And as we look at the four statements, I want you to find an if-then statement and I want you to write all four. Um, so you're going to write the, the original statement. You're going to write the converse. Oops. You're going to write the inverse. So remember this says not P leads to not Q. 
and then you're going to write the contrapositive, not Q leads to not P. I want you to find one for me that's true, 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 true. All four are true. Write all four of them. Okay? And then I want you to find a different conditional statement, but this time I want the conditional statement to be false, but I want the converse and inverse to be true, and then of course the contrapositive will be false. You have to have your own. Ready, go! Yeah. 